walk the walk. Or run the run, as it were. And we'll see what kind of tactic Tucker takes. I was expecting Mike Tyson to jump right on Tony Tucker. Tucker, I had figured that he should at least tie his man up, try to frustrate Mike Tyson. But is he strong enough to do that? Well, that was a good right hand by Tucker. That might have been the best shot that Mike Tyson has ever taken right there. Did you notice that uppercut blocked Mike Tyson? This man, Tucker, may have found out a weakness. He may have seen something. Technically speaking, no one gave Tucker a chance, but there are miracles here. The last time Tony Tucker lost a fight was in 1978. You know, a lot of times people say, well, what do you see in Mike Tyson? And we always felt that he was susceptible to take jazz, but I think what Tucker saw in, in Tyson was the uppercut. He was susceptible to the uppercut because of his style, the way he launches in. That was one of the few times I have ever seen Mike Tyson stopped by a punch. What happened then was the best thing that Tucker could have done. Maybe got some respect for Mike Tyson. Tucker said when we talked to him, he said, I'm not worried about what he's going to do to me. I'm worried about what I'm going to do to him. That's confidence. Another right hand. seems willing to brawl with Mike Tyson early. Step back. Get him up, Tony. Come on. There was a left hand by Tyson. Also, Tucker said, Tony Tucker stated that because no one expected him to win, that was motivation. And he's fighting with sheer motivation here. A lot, a lot of confidence. Yeah, he said he likes being the underdog, even though it's the first time he's been one, probably since he was an amateur. You know what's happening? Every time Mike reaches in, Tony comes with the right hand, a counter right hand. You step back, put the punch in. Step back, here we go. Another thing you have to say about Tucker is that he has fought to the back. level of his competition and just step a little back. bit better enough to win. Against James Broad, frankly, I didn't think he fought that well, but it was against James Broad. Against Douglas, he fought a little bit better. And now we'll see what he can do against certainly the best fighter he's fought so far. Step back, Mike. Step back, Tony. Step back, clean. Here we go, clean. Here we go. Again, a right hand, but he took a right from Tyson. And another big right by Mike Tyson. Did a very good first round for both men, and particularly for Tucker. With a great left hand at the bell by Tyson. Well, Tony Tucker is a 10 to 1 underdog. He wasn't 10 to 1 in that round. Head. Don't look for the one shot to the head. Go to the body. Body first. Now let's see the uppercut almost immediately after the bell. He follows a right with a left and rocks Tyson. The first time we've ever seen Tyson really rock back like that. And again, it looks like Tucker has been coached to look for the left hand. Now there's the right hand that landed high on the head of Tucker and did no damage. And sitting way up in left field, uh, folks, is Michael Spink sitting in the last row of the balcony here at this place. We'll show you a picture of him later on. Mike is Tyson is still trying to keep that pressure going. Kevin Rooney told him, go to the body. Don't look for the one punch to the head. What I like about Tucker is the fact that he's throwing combinations. He's not throwing one, two. He's putting three, four punches together. And he's following up with left uppercut, left hooks. Led with the left uppercut that time. Just has to keep those hands high. That's very important. Because Mike is rocking left and right, left and right, and looking for an opening. Well, you know, Ray, I, I hearken back to your fight with Marvin Hagler, where after the first round, there was no question in my mind, at least, that your confidence just really surged, and you have to think the same thing about Tony Tucker. The first, surviving the first round actually can turn the tables around the fighter. It uh, gives him the confidence, 
And again, what I like Antonio Tucker, Barry, is the fact he's throwing one, two, three. He's following up with the left hook. He's finishes his combination with the left hook. He's using his height, his reach. shot by Tyson. That's exactly what Kevin Rooney was telling him to do in the corner. Now see, this is what uh, Tucker needs to do. Keep tying his man up. Every time he gets inside, you gotta tie those arms up and not let Tyson work that body. Tyson's change. Tyson is trying to slow Tucker down by body shots. He's working his body, trying to slow those legs down and bring those hands down. That was a little bit low, and I think it's going to draw a warning. You go down there again, it's going to come on. Tyson, two good jabs. Interestingly enough, Kevin Rooney had told us that when he tells Tyson to jab, he's not jab telling him to jab to box. He's telling him to jab to get inside. What I want you to look for, also, when Tyson comes in, he puts both feet together, so it's easy to be knocked down. That was a good example. That uppercut is going to do the job over and over again. Almost hooked him with the left hand before bringing the uppercut underneath. He did hold him. That is a look of confidence in the face of Tony Tucker. He's tying his man up once again. Very smart thing to do. He really wants to frustrate Mike Tyson. There was a left hand by Tyson, but it did not appear to hurt Tucker. Punch it underneath. Punch him underneath. Well, Tucker wasn't given much chance, but of the five billion people on the planet, he's the only one who has a chance to beat Mike Tyson tonight. And right now, he's taking advantage of it. Come on. Yeah, when it's coming, come on. See, if you're doing that, keep your balance. When you punch him, walk him. Turn him sideways and walk him. Give me the bucket, give me the bucket, give me the bucket. And there's Michael Spinks, way up in the last row of the bleachers here. He went up there as a publicity stunt to get some attention, and to get a future fight with Tyson. Of course, when he was in the tournament, that's about as near to the ring as he wanted to get with Tyson. I think that was Bob Euchre sitting <laughs> next to him, wasn't <laughs> You're making a miss real good, you gotta come up punching right away. This is the third round. A lot of people did not think it would go this far. Here we go again, tying this man up. Again, very good, good tactics here. You can't allow Mike Tyson to punch inside. Now we need to see some jabs by Tucker. And some lateral movement, which we see now. And catch up, try to catch Tyson coming in with his head. Time, ho, ho, time, time, step back. And that, it, it, Mike, step back, time. And keep those punches up, don't go down there again. Come on, come on. Mills Lane, very take charge as a referee. No nonsense guy. Tucker with another left hook to the head of Mike Tyson. Body, body, first, combination. All right, get off that neck, Tony. Get, get, get off that neck. The grab, get off that neck. Get right with a chip. Took a tightest man up and got out of the corner. There was a good right hand again by Tucker. In close, catching Tyson on the way in. He's finished with the left hook, Barry. Let's we'll get quick punch it. Let's we'll get back. Okay, we can punch it. Here we go. What's allowing Tony Tucker to get that hook and that uppercut? It, what, what's happening is the lateral movement that Tucker has, his jab, he's catching Mike as Mike's born and with the, coming in with his head. The uppercut has been doing a tremendous and very effective job here. And Tony Tucker is doubling up his punches better than I've ever seen him do. There was a good left hand and that staggered Tony Tucker. Again, he's tying his man up. It doesn't seem like much. It doesn't seem effective for Tucker to be tying up. Come on, come on. Let's go. He's getting warning from Mills Lane. But the fact of the matter is, frustration is what it caused. 
It creates frustration in the fighter. Watch out, we got two hands are free, Mike. Okay. Two hands are free. All right, now you're tied in. Here we go. One step back. Watch your hands. Watch the head. Here we go. tactics of Tony Tucker, but I'm not sure. Do you, you don't disagree with those I don't tactics. disagree at all because Tony's been tying his man up. There was a good right hand by Tucker again. But they're uppercuts, Barry. Do you notice they're uppercuts? Again, he's tying his man up. Frustration should show the face of Mike Tyson. There has to be concern now in Tyson's corner. This is the most competitive fight he has ever been in. On one punch at a time, he makes you miss it any pops okay. at one time. You understand? You gotta use your depth. You gotta box him a little bit. You understand? Get the bounce in your legs. Seven, seven combinations. You gotta combinate. You gotta throw the combination. You're just looking for one shot. You understand me? Here you see Tucker backing up, catching. Tyson on the way in with his long arms. And there, an uppercut. He's fighting a perfect fight. And I'm going to show you my scorecard here in a moment. So far, I have Tucker winning two rounds, Tyson winning one, Tucker ahead by a point. This is, of course, about as unofficial as you can get a scorecard. Our unofficial official judge, Harold Letterman, is not with us tonight. He will be back with us in future fights. We start the fourth round. And in Tyson's corner, they told him to box more. Just get your legs under you. Well, in the corner of uh, Mike Tyson, Kevin would say, we need to see combinations, not look for one punch. And that's where normally Tyson's able to dominate his opponent because he throws a barrage of punches. Not one punch because one punch normally is not going to do it. Interestingly enough, it is Tony Tucker who really is dictating the tempo of the fight, not Mike Tyson. I've never seen that before. You see the intensity in, in uh, Tony Tucker. There was a big left hand by Tyson, and that was the one big punch. And another one. You see, this is what Tyson wanted. He wanted uh, Tucker to stand there and exchange punch for punch. In this case, normally, Tyson comes out on top. Get him up, get him up, Tucker, come on. Back. All right, Tony, if you go down there again, I'm going to penalize you. I think what the, the Tyson corner is looking for is whether or not Tucker can withstand this type of pressure. Get him up, Mike. Come on. Mills Lane once more come giving on. a warning, the second right, one to Tony come, come, Tucker. Come, 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 come here. And now he's going to talk to him. Now both sides are going downstairs to watch you. Watch out, punch you. Come on. Tyson needs to use his jab to get in because a lot of times he's lunging in, come on, come on, which back, makes him come on, come on, very, very vulnerable for a counter punch. Right hand. The jab of uh, Tony Tucker is starting to work again. Right, it just back. has to be more great. consistent. Step back, then I can. Here we go. Take it downstairs sometime. He needs to throw a jab downstairs, bring it back up to the head. There's a right hand again by Tyson, but. Tucker appears unhurt again. Definitely has his legs back under him after being hurt earlier in this round. Watch out! That voice you're hearing is the voice of Kevin Rooney. Push that back. Here we go. Cut him down. Let him win. What a good shot. And Tyson with another left hand. 25 seconds left, round four. Very competitive fight so far. Tyson is just trying to wear his man down. He's just trying to slow that movement down. That movement seems to be affecting Mike's punches because he's not able to get his punches in there. Punch out, we got 
But every time that Tucker stands still, you notice a big left hook land from Mike Tyson. Tyson has settled down in that round, going for a long fight now. Now he knows he just has to fight him, hit him, and if the knockout comes, it comes. Put your head back. Put your head back right there. Open up. Look, two good, real good right hands. Two real good right hands to the body there. He came back with a left hook once. You gotta concentrate more on that. You still gotta jab with this guy. What you gotta do is jab with him. You understand me? Yeah. Don't let him bounce on that. Yeah. He made you jab. Just mm -hmm. lie. And them committees have to make you move. Okay. Keep that jab on him. Up, and, up and down. Tyson is working closer into Tyson into Tucker. There you saw that he followed a right to the body that was an effective Ray, but then he had him there for the left that he did throw right behind it. But Tyson started to double his punch up a little bit more, starting to put his combinations together a lot more than an earlier round. And in doing so, he should be able to land on the chin of Tony Tucker. You know, something that could become a factor that you never thought would have is the fact that this only a day ago was a 15 round fight and it has now been made a 12 round fight. And originally you'd have thought that's sort of like making war and peace from 1200 pages to a thousand. Moot point, but it's becoming something that could be a factor. Well, the factor is that Tony Tucker initiated respect. He stood his ground, he rocked Mike Tyson the first round with a beautiful uppercut. So there's mutual respect here. Good hand speed by uh, Tony Tucker. I just don't like when he stands there and exchange punches. Tucker's corner telling him to wait for Tyson to make his move and then do your thing. Tyson got the better of that exchange. Tucker said that everybody that Tyson spot has either run or stood right in front of him. And he said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move and I'll be firing. And through the first three rounds at any rate, I'm not so sure about the fourth, but the first three rounds, exactly what he did. I noticed that Tony Tucker's left hand is starting to jump. That could be very, very inviting for a counter right hand. A lead off right. There's a left hook. But you notice the left hand of Tony Tucker is starting to drop at the side. And that's been his history. Against James Broad, he had that left hand down at his side virtually all night. And even when he threw the jab, he brought it up from the hip. Well, that's how Buster Douglas was, was able to drop it because he had dropped his left hand. And Douglas countered with the right hand. I'm surprised there's not a lot of head movement from Mike Tyson. He's just walking directly in front of Tony Tucker. And that's why Tony's able to get those punches off. He should be giving a little more head movement. Left, right, left, right. Be less of a target. All right, let's step back. Step back, Mike. Come on, have a go. by Tyson. That was a right hand, Barry, but you know the problem that Tyson is making, it's one punch, one punch. We have to see more combinations if you want to get uh, Tucker and get him out of there. I think Tucker, on the other hand, is fighting a superb job. He's doing a superb job. There was a right hand by Tyson. Left missed, right was right there. The cheer you just heard, ladies and gentlemen, is an old, a Las Vegas cheer. The over-under in this fight was the fifth round, which means that if you bet this fight to go past the fifth round and it was an even bet, you have won the bet. You would have heard a cheer either way. Jab, jab, right hand. Jab, right hand to the body, right hand to the head. Spit it out. Take the sip this. Listen, don't get the... The guy done slowed down now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But you can't wait on him. Yeah. You got to take the knee, take the mission. When you hit him to the fight, push him off. Don't grab him. Push him off and attack him. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying, baby? Yeah. He's better for you now. Uh -huh. Take control of the side. Do something differently. You're coming straight and you let him run around. He's running around. Yes, 
change it up just a little bit, you understand? More jaw, okay, more jaw, better intention. Throw the point with bad intention. You get the feeling from Tucker's corner, Ray, that they think this fight is winnable. Time, Did you see time, that? Time, 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 now, that was an interesting scenario. Tucker was trying to get his handlers and seconds out of the ring. The bell had rung. They were so excited about the prospect of possibly winning the fight, they forgot to put his mouthpiece in. You can understand now, Ray, why Michael Spinks didn't want to fight Tony on, Tucker. Tony, put, put back. Back. Here we go. So I think Tony Tucker has surprised a lot of people. Right hand by Tyson. Tucker's going to want him not to tie his man up, which I think is a good move because it doesn't allow Tyson to punch. But they actually, instead, they wanted to push Tyson off and go at him, which I think could be a costly mistake. Mike Tyson's perpetual motions always come to see the break his rhythm, either with a jab or to tie him up and break that rhythm. I haven't seen anybody be able to push him off. And I think he's probably fought stronger oh, fighters. Get back, get the well, pushing a man off doesn't Clean necessarily up. help because you expend energy by pushing a man off. Right hand by Tyson, back Tucker up. Oh, one step back, Mike. Give me the funny one. Step Tyson's back, corner, you heard Come Kevin Rooney say bad intentions. That's become kind of a catchphrase between Rooney and Tyson. Step back, clean. Here we go. One step back. One step back. Here we go. Tyson's just walking his man down, trying to catch up with him. The mistake Tyson's oh. making, All right, the girl's he's following Tucker around clean, the ring. You gotta break. cut the go. ring off. In doing so, you either move right or either left, depending on part which direction your man is moving. Here, Tucker is moving to his right. And what Mike has to do is move to his left to cut his man off. All right, well, sit back. Come on, come on, come on. sit back. He's punching you. Come on. The fact that Tucker has his height advantage, reach advantage, and a good boxer, and I tell you, he impressed me with his foot move because I didn't expect that much from him. But the fact of the matter is, it's making matters very, very tough for Mike Tyson to get in, to get inside. Tyson looks right now like he's in it for the long haul here. And there was a big right hand. Tucker says, no, no, I'm not hurt. I've always found that to mean I'm hurt. That right hand landed because, again, the habit that Tucker makes is dropping his left hand at his side. And he took another right hand, got cute, and paid the price. I think he's watched my fight before. Yeah, I think he has, too. I think his timing is not as good as yours. them legs and using that jab the same way mm -hmm. and that right hand you see you hit him with the right hand you have to do more of that he's a difficult guy to fight he's moving whenever you get close he grabs i haven't seen the punch out once yet let's take a look at that right hand that mike tyson got in here you see him use the left hand just as a way to get in and then firing the right behind it and this is good fighting now that he's settled down the great fighters don't go out looking for a quick knockout the great fighters go out and fight and when the opportunity for the big punch comes in, they take it like that. And here's my scorecard so far. I have Tyson coming on in the last three rounds because Tucker has not been throwing as many punches as he did earlier. That little bit of insolence he had at the start of the fight to establish himself doesn't seem to be there anymore. He has to go on the attack. Mike is not able to get set. He's not able to set his punches up to land on Tucker. There he got a warning from uh, Mills Lane for punching while he was breaking. But again, you notice the movement of Tucker's really throwing Tyson off. Not allowing him to get inside and be effective. Tyson's jab in the last three rounds has been effective in allowing him to get inside on Tony Tucker. 
It's not a jab like Tucker's. Tucker, predominantly a boxer, and Tyson, of course, a banger. But his jab does allow him to work in. All right, one step back. Come on, one step back, Mike. One step back. Come on. Here we go. Come on. And we see Tucker trying to uh, at least get a second win. All right, watch the head. Watch the head, Mike. Come on, come on, come on. Box. You're grabbing too much. Come on, watch the head. I'm impressed. But Tucker's really doing a fantastic job. He hasn't been as tense as he was in the first fight, has he? Ray, he's, where he's he was back. just like he was uh, uh, look, just look, come look, out of an ice box uh, come on, an ice come box. On. How tense and tentative he was in the in the fight with Douglas. He appeared to be as loose throughout most of this fight. No, I was, he's very relaxed. I think what did it was the first round when he rocked Mike Tyson. He said, "Hey, I can punch too." Well, in fact, in that first fight, he got a cramp in his left arm in the first round, a knot actually formed. It was with him the whole fight. And he feels it was just from tenseness. Also, I think in the back of uh, Tucker's head is the fact that the more rounds he go, the more credibility that he has because he wants to prove that he is indeed a great fighter. You know, another thing that I feel we should at least point out here is there was a rumor in Las Vegas boxing circles the last couple of days that... If you go down there one more time, it's going to cost you a point. Once more, wanting for Mills Lane. Third time, he said the next time it's going to cost you a point. But there was a rumor about Tyson's, or rather Tucker's right hand, that he had injured his right hand, and that's why he backed off training for the last few days. That was three consecutive left hooks thrown by Tony Tucker. You don't see that from a big man. Not in a heavyweight. They don't throw those kind of punches. He's punching Tucker's punching, tying up. Again, Tucker trying to get cute and again getting the worst of it, still mugging with Tyson, which brings the crowd alive. Well, when you do that, and I know from experience because I invented it, you got to be very careful because you always, you're so susceptible, you're so vulnerable for a counter punch. Ray, we have to give Muhammad Ali a little credit for that tactic. I don't think so, though. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit. I think that's a sign of frustration that somehow he has been unable to get back what he had in the first three rounds of the fight. The winning the round's pretty easy, but you can win them easy if you use your jab a little bit more. And you gotta listen, you gotta concentrate on getting inside and punching punch out. Punch punch out. You let him hold. You let him hold. Don't say that. Don't say that. Don't even think that way. Give me that. Spit it out and a little bit. Now there you see, he's pointing at him, he's winding up, and, and he's going to get hit by Tyson's jab. <laughs> Talk about deflating somebody's balloon. That seventh round with Tony Tucker being animated and on his antics, the key to that is the fact from a psychological standpoint, with the fighters intimidating this Hagler, I mean, I'm sorry, Hagler's on my mind now, but Tyson, it really affects a fighter, especially when right, the champion can't get his punches off. It worked for me, and I'm sure Tucker thinks it's gonna work for him. Well, it is a fact. Tony Tucker has watched the tape of the Sugar Ray Leonard Marvin Hagler fight on numerous occasions. His father has kind of used that as a tool to get his charge going. Unfortunately, it was only half half worked. But if you, if you analyze it, though, Burr, actually, he's doing what I did to Hagler. He's right, punching a little bit, he ties man on, up, and gets back on his bicycle. Yeah, but you did that and made the punch count, and he did that and got hit. Well, the key is doing what you have to do and getting away from him, not, not being stationary. On the left hand. Okay, I like that in, in, in uh, Mike Tyson because he's throwing combinations again. But whenever he throws, looks for one shot, he's talking for a long, long night. In the middle of the last round, we talked about the rumor of Tony Tucker's right hand, and I've been watching him since that time. I've not seen him throw the right hand in anger since the middle of the last round. I hadn't noticed before that, but let's see when he does throw that right hand or if he throws the right hand. 
we're in a fight of this intensity and this magnitude. When you're fighting, you really don't feel it because those drill is blowing and you don't feel the pain. He did throw a right uppercut there, which missed. Tucker once again tying up Mike Tyson. Not allow him to punch. Time, 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 give me time. Tape on the glove of Mike Tyson, they'll cut it off. Momentary timeout. That can make the world of a difference. Those few seconds, those few seconds of getting a brief can make the world of a difference. It doesn't seem like much, but right here, Tucker's being uh, cooled off by his father with the ice pack on his neck. This is the eighth round. We're scheduled for 12. Mike Tyson seems to have gained control of the fight. That right hand seems to have hurt Tucker. His knee seemed to buckle just a full second. Right hand up on the top of the head. When guys are in tremendous shape, it's very tough to see what, you know, to, to tell whether or not they're hurt or not. That was a right hand by Tucker, so. Oh, one step back. Come on, and let him go, Tony. Let him go, Mike. One step back. Here you go. Time. Time. Take a deep breath. Lean back, take a real deep breath. Deep breath, deep breath, let it out slow. Take it on, one more. Time to get a little meaner in here now. Open up. Put your foot off the rope, right there. Spit that out, spit that out. Right spit that right out. Okay, we'll open up again. There we go. Jump your foot, break your hand. Keep it tied up in knots all the time. I'll stand there, box like you're doing. You're thinking you're looking like a champ. You're looking great. Frustrating. Oh. Okay. Mm -hmm. He's hoping they can hit sneak punch with one good shot and hurt you. Now, you gotta move your head a little bit more. You're not moving enough. Move your head, come in and get in there and punch out. You're not punching out at all. You're putting on a mic around. You gotta punch out. You gotta think about that. You gotta get in there. It's time to go. The question for an athlete like Mike Tyson isn't whether he's going to win, but how he wins. It's like a Sebastian Coe, not whether he's gonna win the mile race, but what his time is. So what we're gonna watch from now on is really, can he break down Tucker? Can he get him hurt? Can he stop him? Can he end in style? Kevin oh, Rooney go, in uh, Tyson, Tyson's corner said, to move your head a little bit more, you need to see more head movement. That graphic a minute ago saying 15 rounds, as we mentioned, we are, of course, as of yesterday, on, going 12, go. not 15. You can hear Kevin Rooney yelling in the background. Get on him, he said. I wanted Tyson to move his head. That's something, Ray, you pointed out about five rounds ago. Yes, you have to move that head in order to get inside and not be so stationary because what, what's happening as, he bo as Tyson bores in the uppercut, he's very susceptible to the uppercut. There's a right hand by Tucker that backed Tyson off. Get him up, both of you. Come on. Good body shot by Mike Tyson. There was a big left hand, but again, Tucker shakes his head. I'm okay. A lot of times, my left hook of Tyson has landed because that's the direction that Tony Tucker's movement, it takes away the power of it. it takes right, off the leverage. Let him go, Tony. Let him go. Step back. Here we go. And right above us by Tyson. What Tuck can be doing as he's moving to his right or left, what you do, you stop 
and then you then you uh, throw your punches. Then get back on your bicycle. Let him go. Let him go. Let him go. Let him go. Go over here. Go over here. Hello. I don't want to have to penalize you, bro. Stick punching some, okay? Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Mills Lane saying, I don't want to have to penalize you. Let's do some punching. Tyson getting off quicker with his jab now. It's a good, short, strong, fast left jab of Mike Tyson. Oh, oh, oh. All right, watch that, Mike. Mike, come on, watch that. Come on, come on, come on. Now it appears the instinct for self-preservation has kicked in with Tucker. More interested in defending himself than in attacking his opponent. Open up. And all you gotta do is throw your jab a little bit more. Where's the punch? I'm having seen a five, six all night. Spit that out here. Here we go. Let me get in here, Mike. He's working on the glove play. Okay, here comes the unofficial judge. That's me. I did score the eighth round even. I have Tyson ahead, 88, 84. That means by four rounds. And unless Tucker can put some real hurt on him, he's lost the fight. He has to knock him down or stop him. On my card. You pretty much agree with that judgment of Larry Merchant, right? I think it's a little closer than that. But uh, these last uh, few rounds here are very, very important. It, again, we talk about judges' criteria, how he's scoring the fight, whether or not he's scoring the most effective punches or the percentage of punches that are landed. Well, if, in fact, ring generalship is a key factor in judging a fight, I really do believe that since about the fifth round, Mike Tyson has been in charge of the fight. He has been the aggressive. Wait, wait. Mike has not been able to land the kind of punches we've seen in the past. And the reason for that is because of the way that Tony Tucker is approaching it has approached his fight. All right. Let him, okay, let him go. One step back, clean. Add a boy. Add a boy. Add a boy. Here we go. Mike Tyson will get his right, drawers lifted rather than his hand. Tony Tucker's right hand now is dropping, and that is asking for Mike Tyson's left hook. Tyson continually putting pressure right, on Tucker watch it, Mike, now. Come on, come on, watch that back. Now get that head up, watch that head. See, come Mike on, can't on. get his left hook in because he come, he's coming in first with his head. He needs to throw a little short, that short jab, then step. Like that. Throw a jab, then step in. Get close. Now come. There was. That's what you have to do. That's what he has to do, rather. This jab will get him closer to the taller man, Tucker, and then he can throw his punches. Once again, bro, you see what's happening here. Then he gets in. Now he's starting to cut the ring off. Now he's not following Tucker. Now he's inside again. The jab once again is effective. It's as effectively as I've seen Mike Tyson jab. His jab is awesome. He gets it in, but he has to use it more and work his way in. And remember, it's a different kind of jab. It is a jab that is designed to get him inside to be able to throw the left hand, the left hook, that is. Not a jab that you use just to keep a man off of you. Running with his chin like that, not with the hand speed of Tony Tucker, and that height of Tony Tucker. All right, let him go. Let's get back, Mike. Let him go, Tony. Let him go. Here we go. I'm almost expecting someone to go down because a lot of times both guys are reaching in with their chins first. Tyson was a little short with both that right and the left. If this fight were a conversation, Tucker starts it off with a few feeble words and 
Tynus Tyson finishes off each exchange with an exclamation point, starting to really dominate the action now. I want to see five punch combination. You're throwing one punch at a time, one punch at a time. Now we see that in that round, Mike Tyson threw 22 jabs and landed 16. And earlier when we showed you our punch stat before the fight, showed that he had been throwing roughly 10 jabs and landing half or less of them. So he's picked up using his jab. He's settled down and he's just fighting. He's not winging punches, not getting caught in as many clinches as we've seen him before. You got two rounds to go. You're in good shape. Now get out there and fight this guy for the full three minutes. Ten punch, baby. All right, try to get off first, yeah, and then you're ready to grab a hold. Ready to go. Poppy, Poppy. Poppy. Tucker needs to do something dramatic. Will he try? He looked a little bit like a tired fighter, just looking at him in his corner between those rounds. Oh, because he's never fought at this pace. But this is oh, when you reach down, down bud. This is go. when Come you on, show that you really, really want to win. This is when your body aches, your legs cramp, but you got to push it. You got to push it to the limit. And in Tyson's corner, they told him he got two rounds left. Fight for the full three minutes. Your arms ache, you start, they start to drop. You know you have to bring them up because you know somebody can throw a counter right hand or left hook. And again, a timeout. This time it is the tape on the glove of Tony Tucker that comes loose. Again, Tyson has to throw his jab and get closer, get inside. To work his way inside, that jab was gonna get him closer. Tucker holding a little bit more early here in the 11th round. There's frustration in, in uh, Mike's face. And the reason there's frustration is because of what Tucker's doing. He's tying his man up. Those little antics there sometimes work. You get the, what you do, you reverse the crowd's uh, approval. I mean, he's fighting his fight, he's doing his thing. He doesn't care what people say on the books or write in the books. Well, if nothing else, you gotta say, Tony Tucker did fight Mike Tyson, and there's been a lot of Tyson opponents that haven't done that. Good left took by Mike Tyson. is the voice of Kevin go. Rooney, Mike Tyson's trainer, is saying, come on, you hurt him. The left foot around. I mean, just check out Tony Tucker. Oh, He's oh, a man right, of confidence. Right, step back. Let him go, Tony. Let him go. Come on, step back. Let him go. Let him go. Come on, come on. Don't let him steal it. Some of them right, are born, and while they're born, it's because they expected the inevitable. On, it didn't happen for them. Tucker's fighting a great fight. Get in with that damn 
Mike, Mike Tyson is one round away from becoming the unified heavyweight champion at the age of 21. But interestingly This obviously enough, won't be a dramatic victory unless he does something dramatic here, but it has been a good workmanlike job. An effective victory. It was interesting to hear Kevin Rooney in the corner saying, with these judges, you never know. You gotta go out there and win this round big. So Rooney just being a realist. I have to say something, bro. You know when I when uh, Tony Tucker won the title against Buster Douglas, I felt that he needed more experience to deal with Mike Tyson. That he wasn't strong enough. No, had the experience to deal with Mike Tyson. I say it'd probably be a blowout. But he said, "So what with these so-called experts? I'm gonna show you." And this is what he did tonight. Yeah, and he has. Even if he loses the fight, he's probably made more friends than he has in the 34 wins that he's had. Friends and believers. Now, you have to take your head off to the guy. I mean, he's in there with a, a monster in Mike Tyson. Who has fought a good fight tonight? Yes, he has. I mean, Mike Tyson has done the best job he could, he could possibly do against a guy as mobile, hand speed, height, and reach advantage. And a guy who wasn't in there just to survive, either. Tony Tucker, as Larry Murch is always fond of saying, he had the big hat, and while maybe he didn't have all the cattle, at least he had a couple of cows. A right hand just barely grazed the chin of Tony Tucker. Crowd getting a little tired of that. Tucker seems to be fighting the kind of fight that he thinks he's winning. Tucker talked the talk and walked the walk. He fought him. And he was a better fighter than most of us knew that he was. There's an old saying in boxing, you never know how good an unbeaten fighter is. And an unbeaten fighter is hard to beat because he doesn't know that he can be beat. And that's how Tucker fought tonight. Conversation going on between the two. This seems of a friendly nature. Tony Tucker, very religious man. And we await the decision, and, and we have seen some And here's ones. my card, which we will put up in a moment. I have Tyson winning clearly. In terms of rounds, it comes out 8-3-1. and one. The impressive thing to me is that Tyson was really rocked in the first round. He took the punch, he gathered himself, and after a few rounds of uncertainty, just went after it as a fight and let it happen. So if you had to capsulize the kind of fight, Larry, that Mike Tyson fought tonight, what would you say? Oh, hold on, hold on. If you had to capsulize, we had a problem with Larry's headset, I should say. If you had to capsulize the kind of fight that Mike Tyson fought tonight, what well, would you say? Uh, Workmanlike, a good solid job against the guy who was there uh, and didn't let him land a lot of big punches. I think uh, for a guy who fought him back, he fought him back in a way that didn't expose himself to a lot of big punches, which everybody else has gotten from Tyson. 
And Tyson is not a one-punch puncher. He's a cumulative puncher. All right, we'll get the official decision now as we go up for the ring announcer, Chuck Hall. Chuck. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the decision of the judges. We have a unanimous decision. Judge Phil Newman scores 119-111. Judge Julio Roldan scores 118-113. And Judge Bill Graham scores 116-112. For the winner by unanimous decision, an undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, Iron Mike Tyson.